praise the Lord praise the Lord bless the Lord is he a miracle working God praise the Lord praise the Lord he woke you up this morning he set you on your way you're in the right frame of mind you can raise your hands you can move your feet you can breathe freely he's a wonder He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Grant is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father. Morning by morning, you mercies. Oh, we have needed. His hands, they have provided. And indeed, we are here today because God has kept us. We are here today only because of his grace and his wonderful miracle that he wrought in our lives. The ultimate miracle when he led captivity captive that we can be in his sanctuary today to lift up his great and his matchless name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have much to give God thanks for this morning. Worship the Lord. Praise God. Praise God indeed. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. The words of God testify of them. From Genesis even to Revelations, the words of God testify of his miracle working. Oh, praise God. And we have proved them in our lives time after time of the many miracles that he is still capable of doing even in this time bless the lord bless the lord praise god indeed he is awesome praise god i'm giving god thanks for his love and his mercies thanking him for this blessed and noble privilege many find it noble to be in the presence of the president or the queen of england but I find it a noble privilege to be in the presence of the creator of heaven and earth. The one who spoke and it was done. Who commanded and it stood fast. And indeed, I am humbled to be in his presence. Greetings, brethren, ministers, friends online. Welcome to the blessed church of God. And as I am called to do this part, even to give... A comment on our scripture reading I pray that the Spirit of God will truly lead because as children of God we weren't told that it was going to be easy he said if any man should come after me let him deny himself take up the cross and follow me and if you know the story of Christ any at all, when he was bearing the cross to Calvary, it wasn't an easy burden to bear. He had to get help even to bear the cross. And so we likewise, we should not expect a different circumstance when we come to this pathway. And one who we can truly say had borne a heavy cross was Job and we know the story of Job he was a righteous man in the sight of God and it came a time where God wanted to prove him and so he gave the Satan the privilege to try he said you can harm do whatever you want to do but don't kill him he didn't have that power, amen. And so the topic before us today is disciplined or tested. It is our attitude that matters. And we know it started with Job, his children were taken, then his cattle, then all his possession. And his wife told him, curse God and die. But he said, you speak as a foolish woman. And we too, as we come on this pathway, we 
are going to go through phases where we are tested. Phases where we are disciplined because the Bible says no sin goes unpunished. And the Lord loveth whom he chasteneth. And if you're not being chastened, then you have to worry. And so we have the scripture reading before us, Job chapter 40, 1 to 5 and chapter 42, 1 to 6. Where there was a dialogue between Job and the Lord. And in chapter 40, Job chose not to speak a word after he was reproved by God. And then in chapter 42, he understood. Then he began to speak. And the latter verse said, Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And you know, there's this famous singer, um, Jonathan McReynolds. He has this session where he's speaking of being on a roller coaster ride. They are all feeling the same thing on the ride. But there are some who choose to shout and complain on the ride. When there are, and there are some who choose to be silent and just bear it until the ride is over. Then he said at the end of it, which one will you be? Will you be the one that murmur and complain during the roller coaster ride? Or will you be the one who sit back and watch God does his work during the roller coaster ride? And this is the question or the, the thought for us today. Discipline or tested? It is our attitude that matters. Sometimes we murmur and we complain. Then we miss the blessing that should be seen at the end of being disciplined or being tested. Instead of asking, Lord, what are you trying to bring out in me? We ask, Lord, why me? Job was reaching a point where he was thinking that way. But then he had to draw back and said, it is God working his perfect will in my life. He summed up his life and said that I was not sinning. I, I, I brought arms before the Lord. I offered up sacrifices for my children, brought venture they sinned, for my friends, for myself, for my family. So I know that there is no iniquity found in me. So it must be something that the Lord wants to prove why he's putting me through this valley, why he's putting me through this testing. And so if you know that you are living, there should be no questioning. If you know that you did something wrong and God is punishing you or disciplining you, if you are a true child of God, there should be no questioning because he's working his perfect will in your life. The will of God for Job was to prove to the enemy that he was a man of integrity, that he would not fall no matter what comes his way, that he was a righteous man of God who would have purpose in his heart. And so when we are put through the fire, it is our attitude that matters. The children of Israel, they went through the wilderness. The attitude that they should have have coming out of Egypt was a rejoicing attitude. The fact that they had no more task masters over their heads. They should be saying, lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have delivered me. We have answered. But instead they said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God do this? I would to God you had left us in Egypt. But they were missing what God was trying to do. The word said he brought them in there to prove what was in their hearts. And so when we go through our disciplining, when we go through our testing, when we go through our wilderness, it will eventually bring out what is in the heart. It will prove who is of substance and who is not of substance. It will prove whether or not you will burn out or whether or not you will withstand the fire. 
It will prove if you will be pliable in the hands of God. It will prove if he can trust you when things are bad. He can trust you with greater. If he can trust you not to murmur when it's not going your way. He can trust you when he blesses you with increase in your life. But if you're going through and your attitude is unbecoming, then you're going to miss the greater blessing that should have been had at the end of this testing and disciplining. And so I encourage you, brethren, watch our attitude. When we go through our different situations, do not question God. When we go through our situations, have an optimistic mind. Not a pessimistic mind. Because if we have a pessimist mind, then we will not see what God is trying to do in our lives. So in all our ways, let us acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And he's not leading us to hell, but he's leading us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That when the sky is rolled back as a scroll, we will be changed. Because we have dropped off every weight and every sin that could have easily beset us. And we are running. We are lessening the Lord when we go through these periods of the journey. The test and the trials. He is bringing out holiness. He is bringing out righteousness. He is solidifying trust in him. He is solidifying our faith in him. That when bigger things come, we can say... I know the Lord. He will see me through. God bless you. Pray for me while I pray for you. In Jesus' name.